Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. Normally I don't put the video on myself, but I had to show off my quarantine hair here. It uh, gets me sweating pretty quick when uh, I run a chainsaw for five hours. So yeah, okay, let's flip this thing around what I got going on. So today I was uh, working on that same property where there's just a ton of aspen. And this is another cut. Um, that's lots of ways down from the, the first one we did, but the, the plan is to continue to just stack the bedding up next to the swamp edge. So we have a cut down that way off a point. There is a stand probably a hundred yards that way, and we'll have another bedding cut right here. So the goal is to get the line of movement to be going like this, right along this edge so that he can intercept them in between the bedding areas and also the destination food is out that way so there is the the draw to go out that way too if he's hunting early season so here was the cut today it, it doesn't look like the other one i don't i think when uh running the chainsaw no two areas end up looking alike but same concept just get them to the ground when you're dealing with aspen and cut lots of holes through it so I have a pretty cool maze going through here. I think that's the edge. We didn't cut, or I didn't cut right there, but I bet it, I could see a deer bedding right there. There's a nice little rise. I was looking for high spots because it is, this whole property's um, got these lower spots to it where there's a little bit of moisture. The deer's not going to bed where it's wet, but if I found a high spot, I would cut a trail to it, like right here. And try to make a little bedding nook and then right in the middle here it kind of comes up and I'm sure once this grass gets nice and tall it'll be really thick in here but here's a little rise right in here so put a little bedding nook there but as you can see I have trails cut all over through this thing there's always a few elm in here like that one right there so when I got that I'm gonna hinge it might have hinged a little bit low. I mean, I hinged it high, but the trees took it a little bit lower. But I did clear the space out right here because it is higher. So I think a deer could tuck in there pretty easy, too. As you can see, I got a escape hatch going out that way. The trail kind of cut a little trail just meandering through here because this was a little bit of a higher spot. And then we, or then I cut go in this direction back here I have a trail kind of circling around that way and then right here is where it gets really neat there's a beautiful high spot right here so it's you can see it's wet right here but right there is a rise and that shouldn't that should stay dry all year so that that is definitely a spot i could see a deer bedding that was my goal once i mean i dropped all this it was a looked like an absolute mess i mean it looked like that but i kind of knew where my high areas were and where i wanted to target so once once i got everything cut i want to cut i just started cutting holes through it so here's one hole i got going this direction oh, a couple little sticks to get out of the way but there's a high point in here. You can see right here, it's high and dry. Here's a great spot. I mean, if I was a deer, this is, this is what it would look like when I was bedding here. So I could be looking out that way. I could look back this direction, play the wind so I can scent check the, the directions I can't see. But I have two, two really good escapes and it is dry right here so this is certainly a spot i could see a deer beside in the bed but we'll go back out this way so i have this outside trail making a circle around this whole cut because i want the deer to feel like they can kind of move freely through here i'm sorry for the a couple little branches i gotta get out of the way but this is kind of neat in here. Now there is the chance that over time this will settle. And if it does, that's fine. We'll just come back through and 
cut with a chainsaw, but this is cool. And this looks like a spot a deer would hang out. And I got these things crisscrossed so many ways that it probably won't settle much, but it could. Because even when you hinge cut trees, they, uh, they tend to settle a little bit. That's why you always want to come back in your bedding areas. And normally it's not more than an hour, but just kind of make sure that it's still easy to move around. I mean, these are all cut, so... They will die so the little branches will start to fall over time so every year it's good just to come back and clean up the little stuff but the trunks will stay propped up for a good long time but this is just a pretty darn cool spot there's a, three different escapes if deer's bedding in here cutting back out that way i mean just a nice nice dry spot the deer could hang out if they wanted to And here it opens up a little bit and like I've said in other videos when you cut aspen it's gonna supercharge that root system so there's gonna be a lot of new growth coming if not this year by next year for sure so uh, it will get thick in here and it, I mean it's thick already but over time there's gonna be a lot of food that the deer are gonna have access to I can't break that that's fine Here's another another little trail cutting around the whole cut here. I hinge that tree. Right. And then we're going back this direction. And I do kind of have a trail meandering right around the outside too. I assume that would probably be where the buck will go. If there were does bedded up in here. It'd be working the outside scent checking them here's another spot that kind of looked high and dry there was an elm I was able to hinge drop it right here um, but nice and open right here I definitely could see a see deer hanging out in this spot this is the kind of the driest spot I think in the whole cut and I'm cutting back this direction making the full loop here there's that kind of cool little canopied area back in there. There's some high spots in here. Deer could hang out if you wanted to. And that's it. About five hours of work. I don't know, four tanks of gas, three, four tanks of gas. And I'm able to get, uh, get some bedding on the ground. It'll be fun too, just because there's no undergrowth real like regeneration coming in this forest and the deer do winter on this property some um, because he feeds them so now he'll the deer will have some some more food because woody vegetation is really the key for deer in Minnesota they need need that woody browse in the winter that's what they survive on so well I hope you all have a great day um, yeah take care God bless